All right, going to start with number four. An important skill to have in evaluating or uh, simplifying an expression is your ability to do this, raise, raise things to powers. Seems simple, but can, you can get tripped up, so just be careful. Um, <coughs> very simply put, putting a number up here, a little number up above this guy here, what's called the superscript, um, super meaning above, script meaning writing. Um, putting this number up here means multiply this number, whatever this number is above, this thing here by itself this many times. So this is 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So there you go. Okay, so our first challenge in this is if I keep writing numbers and raising them to, to other numbers, you're going to be able to do that all day long. Um, the big challenge is like the difference between 8 and 12. Number 8 and number 12. So here we have negative 5 raised to the second power. And here we have negative 3 raised to the second power. <coughs> Okay, so you say them and they sound exactly the same, um, but they're not the same thing. Um, remember what I said, that this number up here in the superscript next to this number means multiply this number right here, whatever it is above. Um, multiply it by itself that many times. Um, so what you see here is a 2 above a 5, but not the negative. The 2 is just applying to the 5. Okay, um, so a lot of controversy on the internet about the use of parentheses and, and what's appropriate, uh, order of operations and that kind of thing. But until I put parentheses around this, the two does not apply to the negative. So what this is saying, uh, the way you could say it a little bit differently, is negative five squared. Negative five squared. This is negative three squared. You see how I kind of put a pause in there, a comma in my, in my sentence, and it means a completely different thing. Negative 5 squared. So I'm, I'm saying there's a negative number. Which, neg which number is negative? 5 squared is negative. 25. This 2 only applies to the 5, not to the negative. Now, this in this case, the 2 does apply to everything in the parentheses. I'm grouping things together with parentheses. I mean, you can imagine you were one of the first mathematicians and you wanted to group some numbers together and do something to them. You use parentheses. We do it in English all the time. We put parentheses around a bunch of words that we want to collect together and apply a, a particular meaning to uh, or emphasis. And so we put parentheses around a bunch of stuff here. Uh, this stuff is a negative and a three. And then we want to take all that stuff and do this to it, multiply it by itself twice. So I'll take negative 3 and multiply it by itself twice. Okay. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative times negative is positive. Big, ginormous, astronomical difference here. The thing that becomes confusing, though, is something like uh, number 9. And uh, let's do number nine, remixed. Okay, where we take negative two to the fifth. Here we have negative two to the fifth. Okay, I happen to know that two to the fifth is 32. And it's negative, we're just making it negative. We're taking two to the fifth and we're making it negative. That's what we're doing. Okay, now this guy here, this is negative two times itself five times because we put the parentheses around it. Negative two times negative two times negative 2, times negative 2, times negative 2. Five times. All right, so negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 4. OK, so we could put that negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2. Now that's a negative times a negative, or sorry, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive uh, 16. And 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. Negative 32. Whether I put the parentheses around it or I don't, I still get negative 32. Okay? So the difference is, is not merely a positive or a negative. It's, it's in the way that we do it. Okay? In this example, we wind up getting the same answer.
take a look at why, because here we're multiplying something by itself an even number of times, which means that, uh, in this instance, an even number of times, which means each negative is getting multiplied by uh, another negative, making it positive. But in this instance, we're multiplying it by itself an odd number of times. These could group together to be uh, a positive, and these could be a positive, and a positive times positive is positive, but then you multiply it by this one unpaired negative. So the result is negative. Okay, so that can that can cause a little confusion, but now it won't because you have been wizened. Um, okay, so evaluate the expression. Right, we talked about evaluate in the last section, or not the last section, the last video, the introduction to 1.2. But if you didn't watch it or you don't remember, let's just take a look real quick. 5d minus 6 when d is equal to 7. So if d is equal to 7, what would that do to this expression? Not an equation, okay? Now this is an equation. We're saying d is equal to 7. This is not an equation. We're saying that 5d minus 6 is just saying if you ever do come across a d, uh, multiply it by 5 and subtract 6 from it. That's what this expression is. It's more like instructions. Um, so 5 times 7 minus 6. 5 times 7 is 35 minus 6. 35 minus 6 is, uh, I want to make sure that I don't, mess this up, uh, 29. Mm -hmm. So this expression evaluated, we could say at 7, d where d is 7, 29. There you go. OK. Um, let's jump to 23, because it's the last one. 2x to the fourth minus 4x to the third. So now this one has x in there twice. So you're going to do two different things to x. Um, and we're going to say that x is negative 1. Oh, man, we've got to be really careful about this. Uh, 2 times a number to the fourth times a number to the fourth. I like to just replace these things with parentheses, replace the variables with parentheses. OK, so what is a variable going to become? It's going to be replaced by negative 1. We are going to take negative 1 to the fourth. We're going to, like we talked about previously here, we're going to put it in parentheses. That's that number x is going to get taken to the fourth. That number x is going to t get taken to the third power. Okay, so it's negative one to the fourth. That's negative one times itself an even number of times. That's just a positive one. Now this is negative one times itself times itself times itself. That'll turn out to be a negative one still. Negative one times negative one times negative one is negative one. So this would be 2 plus 4, because negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And this is 6. Okay, so That's evaluated at negative 1. All right, so that's evaluating with a single variable. Now let's have a single variable, and we will simplify, or what I like to call clean up. Just clean up this expression, because it's such a mess. 9x minus 4x plus 5. Why have two x's? Right? They're the same thing. It's like having two stacks of paper that are identical. Just make a single stack. Just put it all together and, and look at what you got. All right? 9 minus 4. 9x's minus 4x's, you have 5x's. There you go. It's cleaned up. It's simplified. It's much better now. Um, let's look at 29. 7 times m minus 3 plus 4 times m minus 5. We got an m over here. We got numbers all over the place. Let's see if we can simplify or clean this up. We can use the distributive property here. Now it gives us 7m minus 21. Right? 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. Plus, distribute the 4, 4m minus 20. Now we have numbers and we have m's. and So let's put the m's together. 7m plus 4m, that'd be 11m. Negative 21 minus 20, that's negative 41. That's much better. That's much cleaner looking than this junk. OK. Um, let's do our last one. 32. 6 times q minus 2 minus 2 times q squared plus 6q. So a distributive property, 6q minus 12. Distributive property again, but we're distributing a negative. So negative 2 times q squared is negative 2 is q squared. 
negative 2 times 6 is negative 12q. Okay, so this is what we call collecting like terms here. Can we put the q squared with the q? No. No, no. The q squared is a, definitely a different thing than a q. Um, it's just a completely different thing. It's apples and oranges, right? Um, yeah, let's call it apples and oranges. You just can't put them together. You can't say negative 2q squared minus 12q is negative 14 something. What would it be? Q squared? Would it be negative 14q? Would it be negative 14q to the third? No, we're not multiplying these things. Um, so just be careful about that. You're going you're gonna to get messed up in the future. I, I can almost guarantee it. So we like to write them in order of the, the highest power of the variable. It's just kind of something we do, we as mathematicians. So negative 2q squared, there's, a, there's only one instance of q squared. And we have a q, we have another q, so 6q minus 12q. That's a total of negative 6q's. There's negative 6 of those things. And we just get this number negative 12. It's all by itself. Yeah, this is much, cl m you know, more clean than this. Okay. So, yeah, it's good. Trust me. It's wonderful. All right. Let's take a look here. We're going to... Oh. Uh, say 34. We have this picture. I love pictures. Of a triangle. kind of bugged me. 5a plus b, 2b, and 5a. So let's write a simplified expression for the perimeter of this, this triangle. What's the perimeter? It's just the sum of all the sides. It's just if you walked all along this triangle, how far would you have walked? But we don't know exactly. We just know that, that there's, say, these numbers a and b. And this side is 5 times a, this side is 2 times b, and this side is 5 times a plus b. Um, so if we just add all the sides together, 5a, that's this side, plus this side, 5a plus b. Okay, we're going to add that side on. And we're going to add the third side on, that's 2b. Now we're going to clean it up. If we knew what a and b were, uh, we would be able to plug them into the simplified expression, and we would know what we're dealing with. So we have 10a plus 3b. Get 10 of these A's and 3 of these B's. There you go. If you knew what A and B were, you'd be able to find the perimeter, no problem. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to evaluate an expression that has two variables in it, just like we just saw there in the previous problem. Uh, A and B, two different variables. If we knew what A and B were, we'd be able to find the perimeter. Um, oh! We just missed a piece, didn't we? Let's go back to this guy. They're saying, after you find the simplified expression, assume that a is 3 and b is 10. Oh, so we do know what a and b are now. So a is 3 and b is 10. So 10 times a, which is 3, plus 3 times b, which is 10. Uh, 10 times 3 is 30, plus 3 times 10, which is 30. And that's 60, so the perimeter is 60. Now for 37, um, 5x plus 6y. We're just going to do another example here, just like in that previous we, we just finished. If x is 16 and y is negative 9, what would that do to the expression? So 5 times 16 uh, plus 6 times negative 9. And that would come out to be 26. Right? 5 times 16 is 80. Plus 6 times negative 9 would be negative 54. And some of that would be uh, yeah, 26. Okay. Um, That'll do it for evaluating expressions, I think. Uh, now let's simplify an expression. Uh, 16c 
minus 10d. Oh, that's crooked. Plus 3d. Minus 5c. Let's simplify the expression. Let's collect like terms. Is basically what we're doing. Uh, here's some like terms. D's, right? D's to the first power. You got some C's over here. Okay, so there we go. 16c minus 5c is 11c. Negative 10d plus 3d is negative 7d. There, it's simplified. We did it. Uh, no, 48. 3y squared plus 5x minus 12x plus 9y squared minus 5. Okay, so maybe we should just write things close to each other that are the same. How about like this 3y squared? And this 9y squared, those are similar things. Uh, I got a 5x and a negative 12x, those are the same thing. And we got this negative 5 here. Um, yeah, so these y squareds are the exact same things. You, you see them layering around, they look exactly the same, y squared and y squared. Here you have three of them, here you have nine of them, and together you have 12 of them. Of them, them being y squared. Okay, uh, 5x minus 12x. You got x's here, you got 5 of them, minus 12 of them, and so you have negative, oh, 7 of them. And the last thing you have is about negative 5. There's no other numbers to put negative 5 with. Negative 5 is just negative 5. Okay. And that should do it. Um, so, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.